This video is brought to you by The Great Courses Plus. Stick around to the end to find out about some great offers. Unfortunately, much of World War II can be traced from the decisions made at the end of World War I. The blame was laid on Germany for causing so much hostility and as a nation, they got the brunt of the guilt. In the closing days of World War I, the Germans ousted Kaiser Wilhelm and became a republic, but they went deep into a depression as a nation. It was not helped by the global financial crash of 1929. Germany's economy collapsed, currency was worthless. Amidst this chaos, an Austrian politician would rise up to give the nation hope. His name was Adolf Hitler. The Treaty of Versailles had left many countries with internal wars for power. Communism was now the big power in Russia, or what became the Soviet Union. There was a right-wing movement in Europe called fascism, which was ruled with an iron fist by the men at the top. Fascists felt threatened by communism, as it sought to spread wealth equally amongst the people, theoretically at least. Hitler was a fascist and became the leader of the National Socialist Party, or the Nazi Party, in Germany. Don't let the name fool you, just because it has socialism in the title doesn't make National Socialism left-wing. Hitler promised the people of Germany that they could once again be the great and powerful empire they once were, the Holy Roman Empire being the First Reich, the 19th century German Kaiserreich being the Second Reich, and Nazi Germany would be the Third Reich. As Hitler was voted into power in the 1930s, he made anti-Semitism politically correct, literally. He promoted the myth that the Jews cheated the country at the end of the First World War by creating the German Weimar Republic and forcing the armistice. As the years went on, the Nazi party created a notion of Aryan superiority and that this race of people was better than the rest. In their quest for ethnic perfection, they sought to rid themselves of many ethnic minorities, such as Romani Gypsy, the disabled, homosexuals, Jehovah's Witnesses and especially the Jew. Germany allied themselves with the ambitious nation of Japan, which was already conquering East Asia. As well, Germany found allies in the fascist state of Italy, led by Benito Mussolini and thus formed what became known as the Axis Powers. After winning the war, Hitler planned to rebuild Berlin and rename it Germania. The central building would be a great victory dome which would dwarf the Reichstag. Gradually, rights were taken away from the Jews, and after the start of the war, they were forced to display themselves as Jews with a yellow badge. The infamous Kristallnacht, Night of Broken Glass, saw the destruction of much Jewish property in Germany. Germany had shrunk after World War I. As part of the Treaty of Versailles, Germany was not allowed to put weapons in the Rhinelands bordering France. The trickle to war began as Hitler began to arm this area again. They then entered into Austria, many Austrians happily joining the Third Reich. Then they invaded Czechoslovakia, the first mostly non-German speaking country for them to invade. This sent alarm bells throughout the rest of Europe. France and Britain saw Germany as a serious threat. British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain warned Hitler not to invade Poland. Hashtag appeasement. Despite having a deep hatred of each other, Hitler and Soviet leader Joseph Stalin shared a desire to invade Poland, who had re-emerged on the map after World War I. The two leaders made an agreement, and on the 1st of September 1939, Germany invaded Poland from the west, forcing Britain to declare war on Germany. A few weeks later, the Soviet Union would invade Poland from the east. The German invasion of Poland was swift, using a very effective tactic called Blitzkrieg, lightning warfare. They made deep, fast attacks with bombers and tanks, followed by the soldiers, to secure the area. The Soviet Union invaded Finland in 1939. The Finns very effectively fought against the Soviet invasion. They were partially so successful against the Soviets because they were highly skilled at cross-country skiing. That and the Russians didn't have any snow camouflage. During the Winter War, Soviet Foreign Minister Vyacheslav Molotov broadcast propaganda about Soviet aircraft dropping food supplies on Finnish towns. They were actually dropping cluster bombs. The Finnish sarcastically nicknamed them Molotov bread baskets. So when they developed the petrol bomb to fight against the Soviet tanks, they dubbed them Molotov cocktails, a drink to go with the food. One notable Finnish sniper was Simo Hauha, nicknamed White Death, was reported to have killed 505 men. The Soviet Union also invaded Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania and held them after the war. After conquering Poland, Denmark and Norway, Germany turned west. The German army pushed through the Low Countries quickly and efficiently. France and Britain moved through Belgium to meet them, but the German forces were too quick. The surviving forces staged a mass evacuation of mainland Europe from Dunkirk. France quickly surrendered. Hitler mockingly accepted the surrender in the same train carriage the Germans ended the First World War in defeat. Britain's saving grace was that it was an island. 
The Germans planned an invasion, but Britain had superiority in the sea and air, forcing the Germans to cancel the invasion. But they surely bombed the cities of Britain. Ireland, while only a fledgling nation, remained neutral during the war, besides allowing Britain to use Irish airspace in the Donegal Corridor. <clears throat> Hitler had an arrangement with Stalin that he would not invade the Soviet Union so long as they kept out of the war. This truce wasn't to last as both men had nothing but contempt for each other's ideals. Eventually Hitler decided to invade the Soviet Union and the first few months of the campaign were hugely successful for the Germans. They killed and starved millions of Soviets as they pushed deep into Russia. The Soviet Union was to lose over 20 million people in this war, the most out of any nation. The Soviet army at the beginning of the invasion was poorly organised. The Soviet Union was seen as an uncivilised country to the Germans. Ultimately, only miles from Moscow, it was the winter that doomed the Germans. They weren't used to the extreme cold. The Russians were. While Hitler was busy taking over Europe, the United States of America looked on from the outside. Although officially neutral, the United States began supplying allies with aid and cutting off oil to Japan. The ambitious Japanese empire had already expanded across parts of China and French Indochina during the 1930s and planned to expand across the Pacific. On the 7th of December 1941, they led a surprise attack on the American Navy base of Pearl Harbor, causing huge destruction and terrible shock throughout the United States. The attack was supposed to stop the United States from interfering, but Japan had awoken the sleeping giant and the USA declared war on Japan and thus Germany declared war on the USA. Just as the war had been starting in Europe, Hungarian Jewish scientists, who were in America, were on a mission to warn the government. Having been studying nuclear physics, the scientists saw the potential for weapons of mass destruction and feared the Germans may be already working on it. They hunted down Albert Einstein for some street cred, who signed their letter to President Roosevelt, confirming the danger and urging Roosevelt to build this great weapon before the Nazis do. It was a race against time. Several countries were in a state of total war, the whole country working towards the war effort. In the USA, unemployment was down to 2%, with many people either joining the armed forces or working in war factories. After failing to capture Moscow in 1941, Hitler turned his attention south to Stalingrad and the Soviet oil fields beyond. What was hoped to be a great victory capturing the city bearing Joseph Stalin's name turned into a bloody, gruelling battle lasting five months, ending in German defeat. Another notable sniper of World War II was Soviet sniper Vasily Zaitsev, who killed hundreds of German soldiers during this battle. The Battle of Stalingrad was the turning point in the war between Germany and the Soviet Union. Germany would not reach any further east. In the wake of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, the American government relocated and incarcerated 110,000 people of Japanese ancestry along the west coast, many of which were US citizens. Darwin in Australia was heavily bombed during the war by the Japanese. Six months after Pearl Harbor, the Japanese attempted another demoralizing attack on the US Navy near the Midway Atoll and thus gave the Japanese free reign over the Pacific. They underestimated the Americans and suffered a huge defeat, losing many aircraft carriers. The Battle of Midway was a very decisive battle and from then on, Japan couldn't keep up with the US's ability to replace its casualties and weapons. The Allies moved right across North Africa in 1942. By 1943, the Italian people had ousted Mussolini, seeing the Allied approach through Sicily. The Allies moved up through Italy. German forces came straight in to take over the defences. Allied leaders Chiang Kai-shek, Roosevelt and Churchill met in Cairo to discuss the future plans in the war against Japan. June 6th, 1944 was D-Day for the Allies, as they made a massive landing of troops in Normandy in the north of France. They fought their way into France and eventually secured their position. Paris was liberated. The Soviet Union, which by now had amassed a huge army, was pushing hard against the Germans. As the Red Army pushed back through Poland, they began to uncover a terrible truth. The Nazis had been rounding up Jews and other ethnic minorities and exterminating them in death camps. In what became known as Germany's final solution, they sought to obliterate the Jewish population of Europe. Six million Jews were murdered in what became known as the Holocaust. The most infamous concentration camp, Auschwitz, became a custom-built death factory of gas chambers and furnaces. The Allies liberated the survivors. Many of the Jews returned home unwelcome, their houses taken in their absence. The Allied leaders Churchill, Roosevelt and Stalin met in Crimea to plan for the future of Europe. 
The Battle of West Hunan was a great victory for the Chinese against the Japanese in 1945 as they halted their advance and began the downfall of the Empire of Japan. The Allies closed in on Germany from all directions. It was the Soviets who reached Berlin first and in the final hours on the 30th of April 1945, Hitler shot himself. A week later, the Nazis surrendered. The war in Europe was over. Meanwhile, the United States was still fighting against Japan across the Pacific. They were preparing an invasion of Japan when the scientists had finished developing their secret weapon which was supposed to be used on the Germans. It was an atomic bomb. Harry Truman became the new American president after the death of Roosevelt. Truman chose to use this weapon and hopefully avoid a full-scale invasion. On August 6th, 1945, the Americans dropped an atomic bomb on the city of Hiroshima. The city centre was flattened and people were vaporised. Many people who survived the initial blast died days later from radiation poisoning from the radioactive bomb. The Soviet Union then declared war on Japan. They did not surrender, so America dropped another atomic bomb on Nagasaki. Days later, the Japanese finally surrendered, ending the Second World War. It is still an ethical question asked today if it was right to use such a destructive bomb to save the lives of many in a potential invasion. Between the wanton death and destruction of cities, the deliberate and calculated extermination of various ethnic groups, and the use of atomic weapons on two cities, and everything else, World War II resulted in 50 to 85 million deaths. It was, and still is, the deadliest conflict in human history. Once again, the world was a changed place after this war. Many of the Nazis were tried and executed for their war crimes. Germany was occupied and divided into East and West. The map of Europe had changed once again. Over the next decade, two large military alliances formed from the Allies, NATO and the Warsaw Pact. Differing ideals between these alliances would set the scene for a long period known as the Cold War. The United Nations was set up to try and prevent another world war. So far, another world war hasn't happened yet. Let's keep it that way. It is easy to look back and see the trickle-down signs that led to the various catastrophes of World War II. Growing acceptance of discrimination against minorities, toxic nationalism, looking to the strong man to fix all your problems, the ignorance and naivety that a war as bad as World War I could never happen again. Times change. People change. Pay attention, people. And don't walk blindfolded into another catastrophe. This video was brought to you by The Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses Plus is a subscription on-demand video learning service with top-notch lectures and courses from top professors from the Ivy League and other great universities globally and experts from places like National Geographic, the Smithsonian and the Culinary Institute of America. Through The Great Courses Plus, you can get unlimited access to a huge library of over 11,000 video lectures about anything that interests you, science, math, history, literature or even how to cook play chess, or become a better photographer. I use The Great Courses Plus to delve into a little more Irish history, as I am often tend to do. Their course on the Irish identity, independence, history and literature, taught by Professor Mark C. Connor, has some excellent lectures. I'm nine lectures in, and I'm still only cracking the surface of this great course. The Great Courses Plus is giving viewers a great offer of a free trial. Show your support for my channel by subscribing to The Great Courses Plus. Please visit thegreatcoursesplus.com forward slash John D. Ruddy. Click on the link in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe, support us on Patreon, where you get access to early videos, unseen artwork, and live streams with me. Check out my second channel, John D. Ruddy Does Stuff, where I do stuff. Like talk about film, TV, video games, and other random bits and pieces. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Check out johndruddy.com for loads of updates and merchandise. A very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Alexander, Angus Clydesdale, Arthur Revan, Cameron Coyle, Karen Basil, Chair DJ, Chuck Lynn, Colton Sayer, Crystal, Kwong Nguyen Tan, David Morrissey, David Strunad, Dustin Holden, Grant Hughes, 
Jason Romain, Pythias, La Prêche Queen Vara, M. Mario A. Gallardo, Marcus Bucher, Martin Hunenvad, Maxago, Mike Wise, Mixnaja 1414, Monde Rico, Mr. Magnificent, Mr. Easy Play 2, Myth Nguyen, Ollie Course, Rocket Wrench, Ryan Elano, Sadie, Simon Schrader, Sina Yegene, Soars, Stephanie Lenz, Tan May, Theophilius Kilmunis. I still love that name. Thanks again for watching, folks.